Hey there, hi all, welcome once again to Learn News. Uh, I have come back with another tutorial, uh, but it's on Docker, and uh, the tutorial is a very basic one. And uh, I'm going to highlight the theoretical part here, the theoretical theoretical aspects of Docker, and uh, why it is used, how it is used, and uh, virtualization concept. I'll begin with everything uh, on that part. And in, uh, in this tutorial, I'm not going to cover any uh, practical point of view or uh, practical aspect. And just let uh, us quickly come on through the uh, documentation that I have prepared for you guys. Here, as you can see, it's a slide that I have prepared where uh, it says that containerization with Docker. Many of you may be a beginner for Docker and do not know, haven't uh, experienced the Containerize, containerization uh, part so but first of all you have to understand what is virtualization uh, and what is containerization and the the thin line between these two concepts and how the things work what is docker and uh, architecture of the docker along with uh, the docker file and uh, the commands of docker okay so let us quickly guide on through this uh, part so first uh, of all containerization denotes an OS level virtualization method that is used to deploy run distributed application without launching an entire VM for each app. So what this signifies? It signifies that uh, previously whenever you are trying to deploy an application suppose you have uh, an application that runs on 10 microservices. So for each services you have to sort out uh, you have to get hold of a virtual machine and uh, in that virtual machine in particular one virtual machine maybe you are installing one or two uh, applications then followed by another virtual machine that would require uh, in which you would be hosting another uh, couple of applications but that would be a problem ma for maintenance and everything so for that an OS level virtualization, the op entire operating system is split up into multiple compartments or containers and uh, each container they are isolated from one another and they take parts in this containerization process and you host your application over there. This beauty of containers is that they may work in bare metal systems, they can work in bare metal systems, cloud environment along with virtual machines across all environments be it Linux, be it Mac, be it Windows, everywhere the containers are supported. So next we come on to the difference between a containers and virtual machines or virtualizations. Containerization and virtualization, this uh, on the left side you can see that this uh, containerized application is there where the infrastructure is there along with that there is a host operating system and on the host operating system there lies the docker engine. On the docker engine, there are numerous entities known as containers. They comprises of both the libraries along with the individual applications and the, the essential binaries that are required for the containers to run. And this each entity is called as containers. This app A, app B, app C. Say for example, there are six applications you have. But in case of virtualization, what we used to do is there is an infrastructure. The hardwares which are there, they are abstract. The abstraction of the hardwares used to occur, where the compute power, the storage, and everything they were shared among the virtual machines. And what are virtual machines? These are the units which comprises of a guest operating system, an application that comprises of a virtual machine. In that virtual machine, the application used to get hosted on a guest operating system. That has a very, uh, that used to be very clumsy and uh, uh, not much advantageous as that of the containers. And for each virtual machines, you need to install the guest operating system first of all, and the type of image you needed. You have to go with so much botheration. But with containers, we are least bothered about the operating system and we are just uh, considering the application which is which needs to be put up. Now with the help of Docker, you can do what? 
from development to operations the handover it ranges the handover happens everything happens over there and any applications that can be hosted over any operating system and any operating system can um, have docker engine the docker daemon and any application can be hosted onto that and from dev to ops that is the main uh, backbone of the devops the containerizations are our containers are playing an essential role today so different stages are there like you have to build an image there will be a manif there will be a file known as docker file certain configurations you write into that file and that is built and then shipped or pushed into a registry from registry it is pulled and it is run there are different stages any app anywhere you can install it okay next we come on to the architecture so how docker works is like this is somehow this architecture defines it so there would be a client where from where we will be running this docker scripts and there is a docker host the docker host comprises of a docker daemon when we are communicating with docker we are basically communicating with the docker daemon so there are three things we are do first of all we are building docker with the help of docker image so with the docker daemon once the uh, build is completed it is stored into a local registry which is where the images are stored and when we are pulling it we are pulling it or pushing it or doing anything we are there is a remote registry which is there in the remote registry we are pushing those images and whenever we need it the docker daemon will go what will come on to the local containers it will uh, uh, local it will come on to the local images if it, that particular image is present and then if not it will pull it from the registry and it will prov it will provision for the running of that particular containers so you might ask that what are containers or what are images we'll come on to that later but for understanding this this is the docker architecture and uh, it's just a set of platform as a service products that introduces os level virtualization to deliver software in packages called containers then we come on to this images and containers now it will be uh, a clear cut uh, statement here so images are the basis of containers you can tell you can say something like this that whenever a file is there a configuration file is there when the first step is building the docker file building it building a docker from a docker file building an image so images are like prototypes or blueprint they are static in nature and they you can say somehow like this that images are static containers whereas containers are runtime instances of the docker image containers are the running images and images are the static containers so basically they are the same entity in different states you can say somehow like that an image typically contains a union of layered uh, file systems stacked on top of each other an image does not have a state it never changes an image doesn't changes change rather a container can change there are numerous metrics over there which you can change and change the behavior of the container okay next we come on to the docker engine which is the main driving uh, feature it is a client server application with three components a server a rest api and a cli server it's a long running program called a daemon process or docker command process is a docker command over here it's a long running process that processes all the request whichever it's coming now there is a rest api and that rest api it specifies the interfaces the programs that uh, can communicate with the daemon and instruct what to do or what to what not to do with the uh, it acts as a layer and then comes the cli cli is what uh, we communicate with we communicate with dockers uh, with the help of the docker cli and whatever rest api is there they communicate with the core docker daemon and uh, perform accordingly the active whatever activities that has been worked on uh, assigned that goes on with the docker uh, engine next is a docker file it's a text documentation that contains different commands which would normally execute to form a docker image 
and the docker image can be run to for uh, a docker container so this is the uh, structure of a typical docker file where we are running an ubuntu image and in and that the here is ubuntu is the operating uh, it's not the operating system rather we are taking a basic image of ubuntu and then it's a parent image and in that parent image we are copying something inside an app folder and we are making this uh, folder uh, run a python application whichever is present that is what uh, that signifies is it is very much readable and easy to understand next we come on to the important uh, cheat sheets for docker build docker uh, and share so build basically means image building so these are the docker build hyphen t followed by uh, it's basically a tag or the name that we attach to it with an image and docker image ls will provide you the list of the images that are locally stored with the docker engine and if you want to delete an image docker image rm followed by the image name you can also use docker rmi then we come on to the share part when we want to pull an image from the registry first of all we need to log into the registry uh, with the help of the cli and then uh, in order to establish a connection between the cli and the registry we go with a docker pull if we want to tag a particular image to a remote repository so docker tag the th these are the commands that we have to use over here followed by docker push is there after that uh, you have to push it then comes uh, run management run and management portion so if you go through this uh, ppt if i will be sharing with this one with the with this tutorial you would be able to understand the whatever uh, commands that are existing with the docker so here along with the different uh, docker management commands are also there which you can use each serving a specific purpose in order to kill a container in order to run a container in order to uh, follow the networking procedures or processes uh, for the management of a docker image or a container you can run this uh, commands you can try out in docker uh, playground or you can uh, install docker locally in your uh, system and try to have some hands on on that or you can also utilize some cloud cloud platforms uh, like aws uh, cloud providers you can go with a vm launch a vm and hands on and have some hands on over there and do some practices so well this concludes our session hope you like it hope you're liking learn news and uh, this concludes our tutorial thank you for watching uh, learn news uh, stay tuned to my channel for exciting tutorials i'll be back with another exciting episode thank you thank you all